If you're moving to New York City, stick around and I'll teach you everything you need to know. I'm a realtor here, so I'll give you some tips and tricks to help snag your first apartment. Let's start with the most important factor, whether or not you can actually qualify for an apartment here. In order to qualify for an apartment, you need to make at least 40 times the monthly rent in your annual income. That means that if you want a $3,000 apartment, you need to make at least $120,000 a year, ideally more. If you're renting with another person, then your combined income must reach that 40 times mark, meaning that you would each need to make at least $60,000 a year. Don't worry if it's a new job though, management companies consider your offer letter proof of employment and salary. I'll go more into the typical application documents later in this video. I know what a lot of you are thinking, what if I don't make that much money? Don't worry, you're in luck. You can use what's called a guarantor to cosign. A guarantor is someone who earns 80 times the rent, meaning if you want that guarantor for a $3,000 apartment, they need to make at least $240,000 a year. Every management company is different, and some allow guarantors while others don't. Some allow guarantors as long as they're from the tri-state area, or maybe they allow guarantors from every state except California or Texas. Don't stress though, if one building won't accept your guarantor, then another one will. What if you don't know someone who makes enough money to be your guarantor? Then you'll need to use what's called a third-party guarantor company such as Insurant or the Guarantors. They require that you as the applicant make at least 27 and a half times the rent in income and you have decent credit. Well, at least Insurant does. If you've got low credit or you're just shy of making that 27 and a half times, you're not out of luck. The Guarantors look at a number of different factors. I've had them approve applicants with scores under 620 because the applicant's income was high enough. I've also had clients whose income was only 20 times the rent, but they had good credit, so they got approved. Insurant, on the other hand, requires a much higher credit score and a minimum income of the 27.5. Both companies will cost you a one-time fee paid at closing for using their services. Rates vary, but it's typically less than a month's rent. Again, every management company is different when it comes to accepting third-party guarantors, and sometimes management won't accept an applicant with low credit even if they do have the guarantor. Real estate in New York City is a numbers game. You just have to keep asking until eventually you find someone who says yes. If you need help finding a management company to accept you, I know of a few in the city that might work, so don't hesitate to send me an email. It's down in the description. Now that you know the basic requirements for getting an apartment, you might be wondering how you can find available units. Well, in New York City, the most popular website is called Street Easy. You will find a very large portion of listings on there. However, it is definitely not the end all be all. In New York City, we have what's called exclusive listings and open listings. Exclusive listings mean that only one agent is authorized to advertise the unit. Sites like Street Easy or Apartments.com require an exclusive agreement. Pros is that you are only working with one agent, so they know the most up-to-date information on that unit. The cons are that a lot of listing agents are unresponsive. <laughs> I cannot tell you how many agents I have reached out to but never heard back from. Most of my clients say the same thing, which is why they eventually call me. The exception to this is obviously when owners pick quality agents or when the listing person is from the building's leasing office. They tend to be very responsive. In New York City, we also have open listings. What many management companies in Manhattan in particular do is they send out regular emails to brokerages that they like working with. We get these broker blasts usually at least every week, but it can be as often as daily, especially during the peak summer months. The way it works is basically any of the agents on the email list show a space to their client and the first full application received usually gets it, assuming they're qualified. The pros of this route is exposure. Depending upon how extensive the broker blast is, you should be able to find a client pretty quickly. The cons are, as an agent, having a client apply to one of these listings can be a little extra stressful because you're never 100% positive that you're the first application in until you've actually submitted the app and talked to management. This is why if you like an apartment, you need to be ready to apply ASAP. First app in gets it. You might be more qualified, but if the person before you meets all the necessary criteria as well, they still get it. This is particularly important during the summer months when places tend to go very quickly. You still can't take too much time during the winter though, because this winter has been busier than it historically is this time of year. If you want to check out some open listings, I would recommend Rent Hop and Zumper. Both sites allow agents to advertise open listings. You can also hire a broker and have us come through the listings and broker blasts for you. We confirm availability and answer whatever questions you may have before we even show you the space. You're likely to pay a broker fee anyways, so you may as well hire one from the start and put that money to work for you. There are apartments for rent on Facebook, but please do your due diligence before signing anything and sending money. You should always be able to do a live video chat tour. If you can't, that is a major red flag. Run far, far away. 
I would suggest trying to get that agent or the person posting the unit on the phone for starters and then taking it from there. Many different Facebook groups are dedicated to posting real estate listings. If you click on that person's profile, it will actually show you a list of their previous posts and you can see if they've reused photos or reused descriptions. And please, if the unit seems way too good to be true, it probably is. If you're wondering what neighborhoods to move to, I've started creating some videos showcasing different parts of the city, so check out my channel to learn more. Once you've found a unit that you're interested in, now it's time to send a message. I recommend keeping it short, but informative. If you don't have any questions, you meet the minimum income requirements, and you're moving from out of state, I would say something like, I'm looking for a blank blank lease start date, my income is blank, credit score is blank, and I will be moving from blank so I need to do a virtual tour. Obviously, if you are local, then you'd remove the last part and you'd say that you would do an in-person tour. I would recommend ending the message by saying whenever you're available for a viewing, ideally within the next 24 to 48 hours to ensure the unit's still available. If you're using a guarantor, then I would recommend adding a line saying either I'm using a guarantor from blank or I will be using a third-party guarantor. Giving detailed information in that first message will help signify to the realtor that you're serious about moving and increase your chances of getting a response. Feel free to screenshot this so you can use my verbiage in your next message. Okay, so you found the perfect apartment and you want to apply. Ideally, you apply ASAP to ensure the unit is yours. I've had a client view a space at 7 p.m., then go to apply the next morning at 9, and the unit was already taken. That's why it's important to start gathering your docs before you go to the showing. Every management company is different, but I would suggest adding these documents to a Google Drive folder to have them easily accessible. The documents you should have on hand are two years of tax returns, three pay stubs, a letter from your employer on official company letterhead. It should be dated, state your start date, position, salary, and outlook on employment. Basically, it shouldn't say that you gave your notice and you're leaving the company in a few weeks. If you're starting a new job, your offer letter will work. If you work for yourself, then you will need a certified letter from your CPA confirming your income. You'll also need three months of bank statements. They're looking to make sure you at least have the funds to close and ideally some sort of cushion in case you lose your job. Funds to close include one month security, one month for your first month's rent, guarantor fees where applicable, and broker fees where applicable. Guarantor fees are typically less than a month's rent and broker fees range from one month to 15% of the annual rent, depending on the unit. If you have a pet, you may also need to provide their vaccination records. You will also need to pay a $20 application fee. Legally, landlords cannot charge more than this. The fee should only be used to cover the credit check. Each tenant will need the same documents and a $20 application fee. If you're using a personal guarantor, someone who makes over 80 times the rent rather than a third party company, they will also need the same documents so they can fill out the same application as you. As far as the actual application goes, every management company and owner is different. Most these days have a link where you can fill out the application information and upload your documents, but some still have paper applications. Your realtor will let you know what that particular building's application is like when you're ready to apply. Once you've submitted your application along with your supporting documents, now you wait for approval. Most management companies let you know within a few days, then once approved, you only have 24 to 48 hours to sign the lease before they put the unit back on the market. I told you, things happen fast around here. At least sign in, you'll need to pay your security deposit, first month's rent, and any applicable broker or guarantor fees. Those will each be a separate transaction and will either require certified checks from the bank or else electronic payment. After that, you can celebrate having your new home here in the city. The only thing left to do is call up the movers and coordinate with your new building to pick up keys when your lease starts. If you need help snagging your new place, don't hesitate to reach out.